Hey, what is going on all you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. A motor coach, just like any other cars, trucks, and automobiles out there, requires several different fluids in order to operate. There's the obvious gasoline or diesel to fuel the combustion that creates the force of propulsion, or in layman's terms, to make it go. Gas. Gas, Captain. On top of that, there's engine oil, antifreeze, brake fluid, transmission fluid, power steering fluid. I'm probably leaving a bunch out, but I'm gonna stop right there. You guys get the point. I'll let all you gearheads out there who are smarter than me to list all the ones that I messed down in the comments below. But without any of these fluids, a car or truck or bus would either stop running or not function very well. And anyone trying to operate the vehicle regardless of that could result in doing serious damage to the vehicle. There's one more very important fluid that'll strand you on the side of the road if you own a diesel powered bus or truck that was built after the year 2010. And that my friends is DEF or DEF. And there may be an upcoming shortage of this stuff just like everything else these days. And without DEF, well, you guessed it, all the semi trucks hauling your Amazon packages that you so eagerly check the tracking number 20 times an hour every day to see where it's at. All the groceries that your favorite stores and restaurants rely on so that you can keep your fridge, pantry, and belly stocked and stuffed. All the routes and charter trips that you rely on buses to take you on is going to come to a screeching halt. Three, two, one. Well, today we're going to talk about what DEF is, why diesel buses and trucks newer than 2010 can't run without it, and why I think the US is potentially facing a future DEF shortage. DEF or DEF is an abbreviation for diesel exhaust fluid. It's also known as AUS32 or AUS32 and also as AdBlue, which is a marketing name given to the product. The fluid is made of 23.5% urea, a naturally occurring chemical compound, which also happens to be a major organic compound of urine from mammals, or in layman's terms, pee, and 67.5% deionized water. Vehicles that are powered by diesel engines produced after 2010 requires DEF to run. Without it, the vehicle will derate, which basically in layman's terms mean that it will slow to a crawl. Typically, the fastest you can go will be five miles an hour or eight kilometers an hour for those of you that are outside of the US. Although different makes and models of vehicles will vary as far as how fast a vehicle can go without any death in the tank. In 2010, many governments and environmental agencies came together with a goal of further reducing vehicle emissions, specifically referring to the nitrogen oxide that diesel trucks and buses produce. And because of that, diesel engines began to require DEF, or diesel exhaust fluid, to operate. All diesel powered vehicles built after 2010 were designed to stop operating or derate when the diesel exhaust fluid tank is empty forcing owners and operators to add more DEF fluid to their vehicles. In a tank separate from the fuel tank, DEF is fed into the engine's exhaust stream to control the emissions. The DEF once added into the exhaust stream will then vaporize into ammonia and carbon dioxide, which then produces three benign tailpipe gases, nitrogen, water vapor, and carbon dioxide. Now, I did a video a while ago on this topic and went into more detail on diesel particulate filters and how the EPA changed the trucking and motor coach industry. If you're interested, feel free to check it out. Link will be up here and down below. Before you decide to run to the nearest Home Depot and buy all the DEF off the shelves, please do your own homework. I'm not trying to start an industry-wide panic with this video. Don't be like those toilet paper people. You know who you are. Now, I've listed all the sources that I used to make this video today down in the description box below in case any of you want to follow up on what I'm saying in this video. One of the websites I use is the United States Environmental Protection Agency's website itself that's actually keeping a sharp eye on the current situation of death shortage around the world. And the situation is kind of 
evolving. According to Clean Technica, a US-based website that is dedicated to aggregating news in clean technology and sustainable energy, as of November 2021, South Korea reported that it was suffering a shortage on deaf fluid, and the shortage is continuing to bring havoc to South Korea's economy as of today. Since then, the shortage has spread to other parts of the world. In the beginning of December 2021, Australia also reported a shortage on deaf fluid. According to the Australian National Road Transportation Association, by mid-December, there will be an eight-week supply of AdBlue left in Australia. And because of the shortage in these countries, not only has the remaining supply of DEF skyrocketed in price, making it difficult for some transportation companies to purchase any, prices of transportation costs have skyrocketed as well. And, well, when transportation costs goes up, the cost of everything on the shelves goes up as well. As most of the urea used in producing diesel exhaust fluid is supplied by China, the cause of the shortage is caused by China's export of the product. It just so happens that China is also the world's highest consumer of urea, not solely because of its use for diesel engines. You see, urea is also a key component in nitrogen fertilizers used in many countries to plant their crops. Farmers all over the world, including China, have created a strong demand for urea on top of all the demand coming from the trucks and bus industries. With that said, from all the shortages of everything in the world exacerbated by the COVID pandemic and the global microchip shortage, China is experiencing a shortage of production itself, including crops. According to AugustMedia.com, the deaf shortage has been caused by new urea export restrictions from China because, well, basically China is trying to hoard what it can to try to make up for all the lost production of, well, everything. And because the world is kind of short on everything these days, another contributing factor is there's also a shortage of certain plastic materials. The same plastic materials they use to make the containers that are used to transport diesel exhaust fluid. Kind of a vicious cycle. As of December 2021, the deaf shortage hasn't really been noticed in the US. A YouTuber called The Economic Ninja has made a recent video published on December 7th predicting that if the shortage does hit the US, it will be very sudden. The prices of death could skyrocket overnight without any warning. Go check out his video on this topic. I'll post a link to his YouTube channel as well as the video down below. Although the economic engine is focused only on the trucking industry in his video, he does recommend that if you use death, it probably won't hurt to go out and get a couple of extra cases right now. In his words, if the shortage never reaches the shores of the United States, you'll still use the DEF, right? And if the shortage does hit, you've just kept your trucks on the road a little longer and are able to stay more competitive. If the DEF shortage should hit the US, there are several ways the government can kind of work around it. Now guys, this is all speculation and purely my thoughts on the matter and what may come to be if the worst case scenario should hit and the US runs out of diesel exhaust fluid. I highly doubt that our government and we the people would just sit around and allow our grocery store shelves to become empty and people to starve and start fighting over crucial necessities. I mean, first of all, there are still a lot of gasoline operated trucks and buses out there that can supplement the demand for transportation of people and goods. As far as gasoline engine trucks and buses go, there may not be as many of them, and they may be smaller and not able to handle the capacity as well as their diesel counterparts are able to, but they are still there, and I'm willing to bet that if you own a gasoline-powered box truck or even a personally owned gas-powered pickup truck, you may find yourself in a very lucrative position to offer your vehicle and services to help maintain the supply chain if the worst case scenario should hit. Bus wise, there are now many buses out there that are now all electric that does not require any DEF to operate, such as MCI's new J4500 Charge. Many larger cities in the US are already currently using all electric transit buses and slowly replacing their diesel powered transit buses with them. And finally, there's one little secret that some of you out there may know about that can still keep all the modern day diesel trucks and buses running without using diesel exhaust fluid. You see, all diesel engines produced after 2010 that require DEF to run can technically be bypassed. The engines naturally do not need DEF to operate. 
The reason that diesel trucks and buses slow to a crawl once death runs out is because they're programmed to do so, not because they naturally need death to produce the actual thrust. Most death using diesel engines can be programmed to bypass the need of death and still run just fine without any death in the tanks. Now, hold on a second. Don't be going out to your trucks or buses right now trying to hack their computers. All stop. Aye, sir. It can be done, but if one is caught doing so, there are some pretty severe fines and penalties that come along with this bold act. Also, doing so will most likely void any warranty and maintenance service for your vehicle. And warranty aside, most technicians may even refuse to work on your vehicle if they see that you've tampered with the def settings. It's just highly illegal and not really worth the headache and loss of your enterprise. So again, don't run out to your buses and trucks and start tampering with the deaf computers. Quickly, Mr. Data, lock out the main computer. But what I am saying is if the government gets desperate enough to keep the United States diesel fleet running, it's a very easy solution for them to ask all the diesel engine manufacturers that come out with a software package or switch of some kind to simply tell the engines to keep running without death and then shut that feature off when the death starts streaming in again. But again, all of this is just purely speculation right now, but I did want to cover this topic when I found out about it so that those of you in the motor coach industry are aware of it if you weren't already. And if my videos can help any of the hardworking people in the motor coach industry out there just a little bit, well, then I consider this time well spent. But please, everyone, go do your homework on this topic. Don't just make a decision or take my word for it and react after watching this video or any other video or article out there. I mean, after all, you can't really believe everything that's on the internet. Also, everyone, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Brent Denure, the founder of Vintage Coach Magazine. This last issue he released featured me in it. There's about eight pages of pictures and backstory of how I got into the motor coach industry and how I started making YouTube videos. Basically, my life story when it comes to buses. On top of that, there are some great articles of really cool vintage buses in this issue. My favorite one being the story of NASA's Starliner to the stars. Go check it out if you're interested in a subscription. Just visit VintageMotorCoach.com. I'll put the link down in the description box below. I hope you all found today's video interesting and I wanna wish all of you out there a happy holidays. And if you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world.